Around this time, last night, House Republicans on the House Oversight Committee held a sham hearing related to their bad faith attempt to get their hands on audio recordings of special counsel Robert Hur's interviews with President Biden. So they want to hold the Attorney General of the United States in contempt for not giving in to their ridiculous demands, even though the White House has already exerted executive privilege over that audio. And if all that was not embarrassing enough, the reason they held the hearing at 8 p.m. at night instead of normal business hours is because a bunch of Republicans on that committee spent their afternoon here in New York, at Donald Trump's Manhattan criminal trial. But things get even worse, because once they actually held the hearing, the entire proceeding was derailed by Congressman Marjorie Taylor Greene, debasing both herself and the institution of Congress itself. I'd like to know if any of the Democrats on this committee are employing uh, Judge Mershon's daughter. Please tell me what that has to do with Mary Garland. Is she a porn star? Do you know what we're here for? You know we're here about uh, just a, uh, I don't think you know what you're here President. for. Well, you the one talking about... I, guess I, I think your fake eyelashes are messing up. No, what ain't mean. nothing. Hey, hold on, hold on. Listen. <laughs> Order, Mr. Chairman. That's beneath Would even you order? Order? I'm just curious, just to better understand your ruling, if someone on this committee then starts talking about somebody's bleach blonde, bad built butch body, that would not be engaging in personalities, correct? A uh, uh, what now? Chairman, I'm I, make a, I make a motion to strike those I, words. I Congressman Robert Garcia is a Democrat of California who serves on the Oversight Committee where he watched all that unfold last night. Congressman, so good to see you. You were in the hearing last night. I know how it looked and felt as we watched it unfold. What was it like in the room and how do you, what do you make of the Republican theatrics? I mean, first, let's be really, really clear. This was 100 percent Marjorie Taylor Greene and her entire clown show in the Oversight Committee. It was really hard to watch. Um, and she disparaged uh, Congresswoman Crockett. She disparaged Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, James Comer did absolutely nothing to stop this madness. And that's what I think what's the most frustrating is he just mm -hmm. let the thing go on and on and on. We, we can't even get to real oversight. I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene has turned the Congress into this huge joke. She's attacking the way members look, the way that they dress. Um, we already know that this, this whole impeachment, this whole investigation is a sham. And, and let's not forget why we were there so late at night. The hearing was actually scheduled for 11 a.m. in the day, but they canceled it and moved it to the nighttime because all those committee members wanted to be at the Donald Trump trial in New York missing votes during the day instead of actually having the hearing. And so this is completely on them. Um, we need, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, by the way, should be removed from all committees, and the Oversight Committee's got to get back to work. There's one name you did not name check, Congressman, and that is Lauren Boebert. I want to play an exchange that you had with the Congresswoman last night. Take a listen. We know that Trump's public statements have been crazy and incoherent for years. And we know that he is too tired and sleepy to stay awake through his own criminal trial. It's not President Biden who's not sharp. It's, in fact, Donald Trump. Mr. Garcia, maybe you could just lift up that picture of our, our uh, President Trump sleeping. Um, as you say, I, I think he's praying. Um, but if he is sleeping, you know, he certainly looks pretty while he sleeps. Congressman, you, you think that Donald Trump was deep in prayer? Uh, absolutely not. We know first he's not a religious man. That was bizarre. I mean, um, uh, Ms. Boebert, of course, uh, went on this whole tirade about um, Donald Trump actually praying that he actually is not sleeping during the court trial. We know that the New York Times, the New York Post, NBC, Forbes, multi all outlets have reported that Donald Trump has actually been asleep sometimes for long periods of time during his court trial. And that's what we were pointing out is the hypocrisy that the court the court case of where Donald Trump is sleeping, as we all know, is a serious issue. What they're trying to do is say that somehow President Biden uh, is, is too tired or, or too old, or somehow he's not um, a mentally uh, uh, all there all the time, which we all know is complete baloney. And even Robert Hur, who actually we were supposed to mm -hmm. be investigating, has said so, right? There's zero evidence there. And so this was a complete joke. 
Donald Trump's been sleeping in his case, and Lauren Boebert knows that. I, I just want to put all of this in the context of, of why, at least, I think I mattered. It, it matters. It was really well articulated right, by Ruth ben Giad, who's often on this network work and is an expert on authoritarianism. And she notes, quote, the goal is to obstruct governance. Distraction and information warfare are Marjorie Taylor Greene's aims. Oversight is lethal to authoritarians on principle. Government oversight, key to healthy democracy. What we are watching unfold in your committee, it, it would seem to me even bigger and more nefarious than any single exchange. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think we should be really, really clear that oversight is a critical function of government, especially when you have authoritarian governments, especially when you have um, folks like Donald Trump. And so um, the fact that we actually cannot conduct business, the fact that we can't be investigating why Jared Kushner received $2 billion from the Saudis, the fact that we don't know why um, Donald Trump is promising oil executives uh, t t tax breaks and, and incentives, that's real oversight. But folks at Marjorie Taylor Greene don't want real oversight. They want chaos. They want to protect Donald Trump. And that's bad for democracy and it's something we should be very concerned about. Senator Richard Blumenthal, Democrat of Connecticut, sits on the Senate Judiciary Committee, and he joins me now. Senator, thank you for, for taking the time to be with us. You have heard the story. You've heard Alito's response. Your initial reaction? My reaction is there is absolutely no way that uh, Justice Alito can sit in judgment on the two cases where Donald Trump's interests and the insurrection itself is directly involved, he has disgracefully and shamefully displayed the flag in utter disrespect. But even more, he has shown his bias when it comes to those cases. In another era, there would be absolutely no question about the need to question his resignation. But this court has been so disrespectful of basic standards of decency that it may well kind of be taken for granted. But here is the simple truth. He owes the American people and the Congress an explanation. It may well be there needs to be a hearing about how this kind of disrespectful display of the flag occurred. And without question, he needs to recuse himself from those cases, step aside on all the cases that involve Donald Trump. Can, can I ask you, Senator, do you have a sense of the pressure points that would actually get Alito or Thomas to recuse themselves? The pressure point is the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. And it's now time for Justice Roberts to lead, to demonstrate spine and backbone, to call for his colleague to step aside from these cases, and it ought to apply probably to Justice Thomas as well. That's one pressure point. Another one is my Republican colleagues ought to be joining in calling for a code of ethics, not the set of vague rules and principles that the court has articulated, but a really enforceable code of ethics with teeth that would apply to this kind of disrespectful, indecent behavior. And third, we need an inspector general for the judicial branch, as well as most particularly for the Supreme Court. I'm very clear-eyed about the likelihood of any of those measures taking place in Congress, because Republicans have simply abandoned their sense of ethical standards. And I think we have to put the Supreme Court and the judiciary on the ballot as an issue going into these coming elections and really tell the American people they have a choice to make between candidates who say they're going to stand up for ethical conduct and others who try to walk away from it. Senator, I hear you on the ballot box at the same time. I, I do wonder if the Senate Judiciary Committee should investigate any of these claims. I believe we should. I think we should investigate Justice Thomas's violations of basic standards of ethics. And I think that Justice Alito has committed very similar actions. And this latest is just one more that cries out for accountability. Remember, the Supreme Court consists of nine members of a judicial branch that is seemingly above the law. The highest court in the land has the lowest 
or no real enforceable standards of ethics. And the only way to hold them accountable to the minimal standards of conduct are to have a hearing in the judiciary. And I think it's the Judiciary Committee that ought to be doing it. Listen, anyone who cares about democracy ought to care uh, about this institution, and yet I appreciate and understand that this can all seem a little esoteric to some folks in the context of the decisions that the court is going to be making just in the next few weeks, months. Can you explain to American voters why this matters? Why it matters is that the United States Supreme Court is slow walking a decision that is critical to the prosecution of Donald Trump in federal court. Second, it will soon decide cases that are critical legally to the key questions at stake in the prosecution of the January 6th insurrectionists, whether they can be held accountable under a particular federal statute that could also be applied to Donald Trump. And second, whether Donald Trump should be given blanket immunity for almost anything he did, which is what he argues as president or in the days afterward during the insurrection. Those are the two key legal issues that it will decide with direct bearing on Donald Trump. Cut it through all of the legal niceties and technicalities. This Supreme Court will answer to no one for those decisions. Two members of this court and maybe more have demonstrated their bias. And that is exactly why they need to step aside Justices Thomas and Alito. And there's one more point here, which is that, you know, the Supreme Court is taking down through these self-inflicted wounds, not just the fairness in individual cases, but the institution itself. The Supreme Court has no armies or police force to enforce its orders or rulings. It has only the trust and credibility of the American people, which it is destroying. Its approvals are plummeting, and with good reason, because it has squandered its trust. Senator Richard Blumenthal. Senator, thank you so much for being with us. For more, Thanks. let's talk with Melissa Murray. She's a professor of constitutional law at New York University. She also clerked for Justice Sonia Sotomayor when she was on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. And she is the co-host of the Strict Scrutiny podcast. And I have the benefit of seeing you in my peripheral vision as the senator is talking. So your thoughts on what you just heard. Yeah, I, I think the senator is exactly right. Obviously, there needs to be accountability here. There has needed to be accountability for some time, but the accountability has to come from the court. And this is a court that, you know, in Bravo TV terms, is basically like, who going to check me, boo? Nobody. Nobody's going to check this court. This court is on its own steam, high on its own supply, and it's doing what it wants. And, I mean, Justice Alito basically told us where his political allegiances lie. Like, he and his wife were apparently so perturbed by this anti-Trump display that they felt free to fly the American flag upside down. I mean, that by itself, I think, is notable. If you didn't know for the past eight years where Justice Alito was on the political spectrum, now you know. He's very firmly in the Trump camp, so is his wife. And they're flying the flag upside down, the symbol of stop the seal. And his statement to the press did not dispute any of this. He didn't say, like, I didn't fly the flag. He didn't say, I don't know what it means to fly a flag upside down. Instead, he's just like, we did it to own the libs, or rather, my wife did it to own the libs, which raises a whole separate set of questions. Justice Alito is the author of the Dobbs opinion which withdrew the right to an abortion from millions of women in America. For someone who is so intent on controlling American women, Justice Thomas and Justice Alito seem to have no responsibility for controlling what their wives do on their own time. And again, it's not a feminist message I'm trying to send here, but before you come at everyone else's cervix, maybe get your own house in order. This is an optical disaster for you, for the court. If this is your wife's doing, maybe she shouldn't be doing it. One of the things, just to pick up on the fact, you know, as you said, that this was the message that they came forward with, right? Yeah. So there's the response. The Times has the reporting. They respond this to Times. This is a terrible response, FYI. But I mean, then they go a step further with Fox News. So this was... Um, uh, Fox News anchor Shannon Bream, who apparently was told by 
by Justice Alito. He told me a neighbor on their street had an F Trump sign that was within 50 feet of where children await the school bus in January 21. Mrs. Alito brought this up with the neighbor, which at the time, it seems Fairfax schools were remote, so there weren't likely no children on bus. But the fact that he chooses to go to a conservative media outlet mm -hmm. to expand his story. This is not the first time he's done no, this. No, this is not the first time he has gone to a conservative media outlet. He's been to the Wall Street Journal many times to state his views on his views that the organized bar doesn't defend the Supreme Court enough, all of, all of this. I mean, he's done this before. But the idea that you are so disgruntled with your neighbor's decision to display a sign, however vulgar, that your response is to fly the United States flag upside down in violation of the U.S. flag code is a real choice. I mean, if that's how you're owning the list, you know, I guess. So, so let me ask you this, because I, you, you clerked for Justice Sotomayor before she was Justice Sotomayor. If Justice Sotomayor had ever flown the American flag in any manner other than it was intended, she would be living in Guantanamo Bay right now. But I can do one better than Please. that, Alicia. Today is May 17th. It is the 70th anniversary of Brown versus Board of Education, mm -hmm. which was argued by Thurgood Marshall, who became the first African-American to sit on the United States Supreme Court. He occupied the chair that Justice Clarence Thomas now sits in. When Justice Marshall and his wife Cecilia came to D.C. when he took his role on the court, they were very careful. Um, they didn't socialize with the people that they had socialized before, and they were very social people. But Mrs. Marshall understood that she could not do the things that she had done before, that her husband's position made it so important for them to maintain this patina of complete neutrality that they had to basically sequester themselves. And they didn't lead very exciting social lives. They were pretty much reclusive in D.C. once he took that spot because she knew he had to be above reproach. Where is that same concern on this court for being above reproach. Like, you would never see it from any of these liberal justices. You wouldn't have seen it from Thurgood Marshall. But all you do is see it from these Republican justices who can't seem to stop being insurrection forward.